Here's why it doesn't really make sense when you say they're fine to be fat. It's just about me. I'm not fine with being fat. There's this big cultural understanding in the whole field of weight loss that it's just about ourselves. And, you know, other people, I don't judge them for being fat. There's a little bit of a dissonance there. Why do you not like being fat? What are the factors for you? What are the underlying beliefs of that? That's the point where things kind of fall apart. Because if you want to say like, oh, I just want to be healthier, or I want to look better, or blah, 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 blah. There are beliefs that are underpinning that. You think thinness is related to health. It's a direct correlation. Thinness is not directly correlated to health, but obesity is directly correlated to health issues. It's a direct correlation. Maybe you think thinness is more attractive. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You don't exist in a vacuum, and so those uninterrogated background beliefs are going to bleed out on everyone else. It's just easier to ignore them when they're other people, but they're still there and they're still influencing your interactions with these people. When we have a situation like that where it's like, oh, I'm not fine with it, but I'm fine with other people, it's really, really important to interrogate where that comes from because it just it influences how you see the world it influences how you move through it and it does color your interactions with people so it's just important to be aware of those things and not just keep creating distance because it's really important to know where they come from and yeah so you are not only asking for acceptance but also asking for people to want to be fat okay you don't need to have a reason if you want to lose weight. It's your body choice, just like changing hairstyle. I'm curious what is there to like about being fat? Obesity fact. Americans consume 23% more calories daily compared to 50 years ago. Some days, I roll in a wheelchair, but guess what? That doesn't define my worth. Some days you might see me using a walker, but my worth does not change. And neither does yours if you use a mobility aid too. Some days I might need a little support from my cane, but that doesn't change a thing I'm still absolutely worthy. Some days I walk unassisted and you know what? My worth remains the same. Everybody is worthy of human decency no matter what. Beautiful women get around however they can. Or just do better. I'm surprised you're not asking for a second wheelchair for free. Obesity fact. Obese individuals miss 56% more workdays than healthy weight counterparts. Hello there. So I'm going to take a minute to, um, instead of like, you know, fuck you, you're wrong. I'm going to take this minute to try and educate you and to explain in my own words, the difference between fat shaving and skinny shaving and how they are not the same. But a lot of people think that they are the same and I think that there might be a misunderstanding or a misrepresentation of what people actually think fat shaming is. So skinny shaming is obviously like, ew, you're skinny or like skin and bones or like comments about your skinny body that are degrading and are wrong and hurtful, right? I'm not denying that, that that's bullying. It is bullying. However, Fat shaming is not the same thing as that because fat shaming is not just calling someone fat. It's not just making fun of a fat person. Other examples of fat shaming are when the doctor tells you to lose weight as your medical advice when you go in for like an ear infection or an eye infection. Or it's when you've continuously um, rolled your ankle for 15 times over the years and you go in and say, my ankle hurts. And then all they have to say is, oh, you need to lose weight. That is an example of fat shaming. That's a valid advice. Another example of fat shaming is when you go into a store and then they don't have your clothing size that you want to wear or that you want to buy. And then you go and you complain and then they say, oh, just buy it online. That is a level of fat shaming. That's saying that, well, if you want to buy your clothes in the store, then you need to be thinner. Or, well, you're fat, so you have to pay the consequence of going out of your own way just to get your basic necessities met. Other examples of fat shaming are going, or like online dating. 
I went on today for fucking, I don't know what, I just felt like it. And out of the few people that messaged me, a handful of them told me that I need to go to the gym. Did I ask for this? No. But putting myself in that space, you get automatic fat shaming and you get automatic systemic fat phobia. Now, those are just a small um, a bunch of examples of what fat shaming is. So when people say that skinny shaming and fat shaming is the same, I say no. One, because I'm factually correct, but also because in those same instances, fat or skinny people do not have the same experience as fat people. Those experiences that I just listed are inherent and are only directed or only happen to the majority of fat people, right? Meaning skinny people do not get denied their basic human rights for their body size. Fat people do. Fat people get discriminated against for their body size. Then people don't. And that's why skinny shaming and fat shaming are not the same thing. Now, if you want to continue to deny it, then that just means you're ignorant and won't educate yourself. And you won't listen to fat people's voices, which just reinforces that you're probably fat phobic. So if it'll help, go watch a thin person explain the same thing to you. Maybe you'll listen then. Basically, you are saying that buying 6XL clothes in stores is a human right. Okay. This was so patient and generous of you. Amazing response. Obesity fact. Insufficient sleep disrupts hormones that regulate hunger and satiety, increasing cravings and calorie intake. People love to wonder why fat people talk about being fat all the time. And I think that's a really big misconception because we talk about it a lot because the world talks about it. If the world wasn't so fat phobic, I wouldn't have to be so aware of that as a part of my own identity. We talk about it because we have to, because we're in this era of needing to bring visibility to fatness in a way that isn't just shitty. This happens a lot to people in groups whose experiences people don't really care about. More annoyed that we're talking about our experience and we're complaining about our experience than the fact that we have so many things to complain about and we have so many things in the way of us. Being an anonymous account and commenting fat phobia isn't real doesn't change the very real systemic things we have against us. I want fat people to be able to go to the doctor and get medical care. I want fat people to be able to wear what they want in public and also wear what they want, period. We have like something like 80% less options or more compared to people who are thin. We want to go clothes shopping like everyone else. We want to just get groceries like everyone else. We want to do things without them all being a risk, without them all being a call to bullying. If you are not familiar with the fat experience, trust people who are fat when they talk to you about their experience. Why is always the same argument about clothes in stores? Don't you think that you have better things to worry about than fashion? It takes away the power to be hurt by acknowledging it first. It seems to make people like you more as well, because you're self-aware. Obesity fact. Having a BMI over 30, increases the risk of diabetes by 93 times. Excuse the sound of sizzling sausage in the background, but I have to tell you something that is truly going to change your brain. We are well into January and that means we are seeing people that are losing weight, doing weight loss things, moving their bodies, eating differently. And I want to tell you that none of that has anything to do with you. If that's something that you want to do, then I think it's wonderful. If it's something that you're not able to do, it's okay too. There's been so many plus size and fat creators losing weight and changing their bodies and i know people are mad but at the end of the day people need to do what they feel is best with their bodies and nobody owes anybody anything and i know how it can feel like a slap in the face and you feel so betrayed but guess what the only person in charge of your happiness is you and to be honest that is a beautiful liberating thing let me check the sausage though okay so i'm done with breakfast this is my breakfast it's like greek yogurt chia seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin, blueberries, and blackberries, all the good stuff, eggs, hash browns, tomatoes, anti-inflammatory things for me. So um, we're using Bowie's plates and bowls. I don't wanna, whatever. And here's Bowie's. This is his breakfast, hash browns, boiled eggs, sausage, uh, blackberries, strawberries. You know how to feed your body best. Nobody else. 
Listen to your body. Do what feels good for your body. Honor that. Don't pay attention to everybody else and the background noise. And just remember that everybody else is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. And it's a lot easier to judge people than it is just to heal yourself. Sending you love. This is the worst advice. No, obese people should never trust their bodies. Their hormones are out of whack. Yes, do what makes you happy. Isn't heroin engineered to make you feel as happy as physically possible? Sounds like bad advice. You know how to feed your body best. If you weigh 450 pounds then you obviously don't know how to feed your body. The only thing more beautiful than the sound of Tess Holliday's voice is Tess Holliday's voice over sizzling bacon. Obesity Fact People with obesity incur $1,500 higher annual medical costs than individuals with healthy weight.